In this problem, we're given a conversion chart between units of volume. Uh, specifically, we are told the volume of one away in terms of chaldrons, bags, pottles, and gills. And what the question is essentially asking us to do, or the first part of the problem anyway, is to fill out the rest of the blanks here. We're supposed to find the volume of a chaldron in terms of all the other variables, the volume of a bag, and then for a pottle and gill and so on and so forth. And that is how the first few parts of the problems are aligned. And specifically, part A asks us to fill out this kind of this first column here. So basically, find the volume of all of these units in terms of a way. And obviously, the way row is given to us. And actually, this the fact that we have this row here, that will be enough to fill out the rest of this chart. So just to start us off here, let's find out what the volume of one chaldron is in terms of ways. Now we are given, uh, we are told that one away is equal to 10 ninths of a chaldron. So how are we going to figure out what that is? So we can take a closer look at the relationship between one away and a chaldron based on the information that the problem gives to us. So if uh, I write it out in a more clear manner right here, where we say that one way is equal to 10 ninths of a chaldron, then it becomes a little bit more clear uh, how actually the algebra here is quite simple. If I want to isolate one single chaldron on its own, then you might realize that all you really would have to do in this case is simply divide 10 ninths by 10 ninths to get the chaldron equal to one chaldron. So, in other words, what we'll want to do here is get uh, is divide both sides of this little equation here by 10 ninths. And in doing this, uh, we'll see that one chaldron is simply equal to 9 tenths of a way. Or in other words, to convert uh, our chaldrons into ways, or our ways into chaldrons rather, uh, essentially all we're doing is finding the reciprocal of the value that it's given us. So if we know that one chaldron then is going to be equal to 10 ninths of a way, uh, then we can fill that into the, uh, this little space right here, uh, 9 tenths. Or uh, the question actually asks us to uh, give the answer in terms of three significant figures. So 10 ninths is going to be equal to uh, 9 tenths is just going to be equal to 0.9. Or if we're looking for three significant figures here, then I'll add two zeros at the end. And that is the first part of the first part of the problem, since we still have to find the rest of it. And uh, if we go by the same logic here for the rest of the of part A, then it becomes the same general, the same very simple process of taking the reciprocal and converting it into a decimal to get a three significant answer that we can use to fill in this little column here. So if we were to do the same thing, then for uh, um, then for a bag into a, then we'll take the 40 thirds bags, because we're told that one way is equal to 40 thirds of a bag. So we'll take that reciprocal and have it equal, be equal to 3 fortieths, or uh, that would be equal to, in terms of three significant figures, that's 7.50 times 10 to the power of negative 2. I wrote, I'm writing it in three significant figures here. Uh, I'm writing it in scientific notation so that we can illustrate it as three significant figures. And let's do the same thing for the pottles. So that will be 1 over uh, 640 pottles. Or in other words, 1.56 times 10 to the negative 3. And finally, we want to convert. We want to find out how many uh, ways are in a gill. So we're told that there are 120,240 gills in a way. So again, we'll take the reciprocal of that, 1 divided by 120,240. And that is equal to 8.32 times 10 to the power of negative six.
part B is effectively the same thing, only instead of filling out this uh, way column here, now we're asked to fill out the children column. And this is when things are going to start getting a little bit trickier, but it's still roughly the same sort of general method of conversion here. Now first off, notice that this little uh, bit here, this uh, spot right here, where it says one children equal to how many children's, that part's obviously going to be the easiest, since we know that's always going to be one. So our first answer to part B is just simply going to be one. Uh, and of course, the rest are going to be a little bit trickier. But, however, you would be right to notice a little bit of a pattern here, in the sense that the diagonal of this entire little chart here is going to be the easiest part, since it's just, it's just going to be one all the way through. Since a one bag is equal to one bag, a poddle is equal to one poddle, and a gill is equal to one gill. So those parts of the problem are all going to be straightforward. Now for the next step in part B, we have to find out how many children's are in one bag. Now this might seem a little bit harder than uh, part A, because in part A we had to find the relationship between all these units and ways. And we had given the first row to us, telling us uh, how many of each of these units are in a single way. This part might seem less intuitive, because we, don't, we aren't already given uh, an immediate direct relationship between chaldrons and bags, in the sense that we're not told, hey, one chaldron is equal to this many bags, or one bag is equal to this many chaldrons. The table doesn't spell that part out for us, but that doesn't mean that we aren't given a relationship between the chaldrons and the bags already. Because if we look back at the way row, if, if we ignore the fact that this is the way row for a second, we can see that we're still given the relationship here. We're still told that 10 ninths of a chaldron, which is equal to one way, is equal to 40 thirds of the bag. So let's just set those parts equal to each other. If I uh, set the number of chaldrons and the number of bags in one way equal to one another, uh, because, again, keep in mind, both of them represent one way, so both of these two ratios are equal to one another, and if I set them equal to each other in this much more clear manner here, see, I, haven't, I have it written out based on the data in the table that 10 ninths of a children is equal to 40 thirds of a bag, and uh, we want to find out how many children's are in a bag. So we want to solve for one single bag. So to do that, we'll just simply want to divide both sides of this very simple uh, equation here by 40 thirds. And in doing so, uh, we f 40 thirds divided by 40 thirds is obviously equal to one, so that will solve us for one bag. And 10 ninths divided by 40 thirds is equal to 1 twelfth. So one bag is equal to 1 twelfth of a, of, a, of a children, which is about equal to, in terms of three significant figures, that is 8.33 times 10 to the negative 2. And basically, that's how you want to do this. That, that's how you want your approach to be for this entire problem, really, or for the, for the filling out the charts of this problem. Using this very simple approach, of setting the ratios equal to each other based on the information we are given, you can repeatedly do this using a very similar method to fill out the entire table. I won't show every single step of this problem because that would eventually get pretty tedious before, when it's pretty much the exact same very simple process of setting the ratios equal to one another that are in the same row and dividing both sides by the number you need to solve for one bag or one pottle or one gill or whatever value it is you're solving for. Uh, so just keep on using the same process to solve for each spot in the table and that is how you'll be able to do the first few parts of this problem. All right, so the rest of the parts uh, in filling out the chart are as follows. So uh, as I just explained, uh, the number of chaldrons in a bag are going to be uh, 8.33 times 10 to the negative 2 in three significant figures using the ratio relationship method that I described. And continuing on down the column, that will be uh, 
1.74 times 10 to the negative 3 chaldrons in a pottle, and 9.24 times 10 to the negative 6 chaldrons in a gill. Now for part C, for the, the bag column. Now that is going to be... Uh, part C is going to be 12 bags in a chaldron. One bag in a bag, obviously. 2.08 times 10 to the 2 bags in a pottle. And 1.11 times 10 to the negative 4 bags in a gill. As for part D, the pottle column, that's 576 pottles in a chaldron, 48.0 pottles in a bag, uh, one pottle in a pottle, of course, and 5.32 times 10 to the negative 3 pottles in a gill. And then there is part E, uh, the, the gill column. So it's going to be uh, 1.08 times 10 to the 5th gills in a chaldron, 9.02 times 10 to the 3rd gills in a bag, 188 gills in a pottle, and 1 gill in a gill. So that is it for filling out this conversion chart. But we're not quite done to the problem yet, because this problem does give us a few additional exercises following the steps to actually fill out the, the graph. So the final part of this problem, part F, tells us that one bag is equal to 0 0.1091 uh, uh, cubic meters. We are asked to find the volume of 1.5 chaldrons in cubic meters. Now, it's a good thing that we made this table, because now that we have all of the data that we could need, that we could ever hope for regarding these uh, units and how they relate to one another, now, it'll be very easy to convert uh, a number of chaldrons or a number of any unit into meters by simply setting up a chain link uh, conversion in the way that we've been doing for the past few problems now. So I'll set up a chain link conversion uh, to make this conversion. All right, so here I have set up the chain link conversion we'll need to use. So we know we're converting from 1.5 chaldrons and uh, the unit, or the conversion we're given for, uh, in meters squared is a relationship between cubic meters and bags. So first we'll want to convert the chaldrons into bags. Now in part C, we found that one chaldron is equal to 12 bags. So I used that little conversion right here to convert from chaldrons into bags. And then multiplied that by our conversion from bags into cubic meters. So uh, 0 0.1091 cubic meters over one bag. And completing this multiplication, putting it into your calculator, you get a volume of 1.96 cubic meters. And that is our final answer.